Crib in the house. Ha a happy Festus, Spikelings, and his eye bring over your e of all e holiday cheer. Aspiring Spike, welcome to my Shark Typhoon. Today in the Typhoon, we're going to show our heartless Grinchy side with heartless dungeon combo modern. Can our opponent still sing with all the creatures, life points, or wins? Stay tuned to find out and support the stream with the usual stuff. Thank you, Chest. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so this is the second time we're playing this archetype on stream. We started with it on Monday. And I like the deck, so for, for those of you who are, you know, seeing it for the first time, the combo is Heartless Summoning, Ace Rec, uh, the Arch Lich, and Relic of Legends for a potential turn 3 win if you just go turn 2 summoning Relic of Le Legends into Ace Rec, uh, cast off the Relic of Legends. You get to venture into the dungeon infinite times, which can uh, drain your opponent for as many cards that are in your library, effectively. Um, I, I was working on this deck before, um, before the version we played on Friday, though. And I was really, really of the opinion that Golos was just like, just a really, really good fit of the deck. But I had a hard time, I had a hard time getting it in. Where Golos is, uh, you, you can is is a great to curve out with with Heartless Summoning. Just turn two Summoning, turn three Golos, uh, set up for Cabal Coffers Urborg. It is, um, it is also a legend for Relic of Legends, just to like power this card up a little bit. I think is somewhat important, and then also like. Relic of Legends with Golos can potentially like let you activate it more times. Not obviously not like you know, um, <laughs> not like it's, like it's not like super realistically you can activate this a lot, but like it, there's like some small, some small synergy there. Uh, additionally, um, Golos of course in these mono black shells is uh, enabling you to Urbor Cabal Coffers, and when you're Urbor Cabal Coffersing, you just get to Ace Rack over and over and over and over again, and especially venture into that that left dungeon, which will let you like dig for your your missing combo piece too. And so, like, there's some, some, like, cool overlapping synergy there. I did really like the Grief, Muldrifter, Undying Malice, Malakiri Birth Plan. I thought that this was really good. We're, a Muldrifter, um, one of the best cards to pair with Heartless Summoning, especially when you can just go, like, one mana Muldrifter, <laughs> Malakiri Birth, Undying, and draw four cards, really just bury your opponent, uh, potentially Witch's Cottage back Muldrifter. I, I do still think this card is worth splashing for, but and, and thankfully it's like a pretty easy to do, very light splash with lots, lots of fetch lands, just a couple watery graves, and can even cast it off of Relic of Legends. Um, but I didn't like the the main deck Thoughtseize just so much, so I actually felt like it was like somewhat easy kind of swap of Thoughtseize for Golos in the main. And I'm playing the Thoughtseizes in the sideboard now over the the blue counter spells. So this is you know mostly black with a very very light. Light blue splash. Um, I think that's everything to go off over. We can, yeah, yeah. There's gonna be a lot of. Hopefully, hopefully, everybody is full of Christmas cheer and just uh, concedes without making me click through the combo. This is an okay hand. We don't have blue mana, but we do have like heartless summoning turn three, two mana grief. We have push on turn one. If we draw blue mana, this hand's pretty good, especially with the cottage to recur mold drifter. We have cottage. We have co coffers or board. It's only mold to six. No, Stream Decker doesn't uh, update automatically, but I did update it manually. Yeah, the, yeah the, in paper, you can just combo without, you know, you just demonstrate the loop and win the game. Turn one Meyer. Hopefully, we don't get uh, Blood Moon out of the game. So we have. No, Grief is coming down to turn too slow. Well, goodbye, Heartless Summoning. What is the advantage of Ego over Necromantia? So I, I typically think that Ego is better than Necromantia, where, like, so when you've, like, surgery, when you've exiled their win conditions, they're going to be, like, somewhat desperate, looking for some way to cobble together a win, right? And when that's the case, I would rather them have random cards in their hand in a deck that is, like, crippled since it's been... Um, I could maybe grief them this turn, Pitch Profane Tutor, but I think I'm going to wait a turn. Um, because I want to avoid getting Blood Mooned. Although, actually, if they're playing Inquisition, they're probably not playing Blood Moon, right? Because, like, Inquisition sucks. Yeah, they're definitely playing John. <laughs> maybe I'll still grief them, we'll see. I might, wanna, I might want the grief to be able to block Ragavan. Maybe it'll depend on what we draw. Um... Another Heartless Summoning. So I think another Heartless Summoning, I'll just pitch. Obviously, like, this doesn't mean I have to, like, draw something now, but we can also just draw something. Maybe it's just a Spin Profane Tutor this turn. 
I kind of like that, because if, if I brick, obviously, if, if I hit a blue source, I'd want to be able to Muldrifter. But if I don't hit a blue source, I'm like, I'll really, really have Wish I had suspended the tutor. Um, what was I saying? How about faster paper? Yeah, Eagle, so, so like, Eagle of ne over Necromantia. Like, I, I, when you Necromantia them, if you're giving them, like, two or three zombies, sometimes, like, that is just, like, enough of a win condition when you're, like, spinning three mana to not impact the board, if that makes sense. Um... As opposed to the Exile of Watery Grave, as opposed to um, Necromancia, which gives them you know a card or two sometimes in a deck that's like relatively crippled, it, it, it is it's definitely oh that's a sick draw. It's definitely like close, but that's my uh, my rationale. Okay, so let's cast Heartless Summoning. Um. So if I go play Malachi Rebirth tapped, next turn I can go Witch's Cottage, Target Grief, Profane Tutor for the Relic, Activate Coffers, 5 total mana, uh, Relic down to 2 total mana, Evoke Moldrifter, um, Tap Relic, Cast Grief for 2 mana. Uh, Rebirth is a Swamp because of Urborg. This is also better against Inquisition. Grief will get shuffled that line. No, I'm not. Ne next turn, I cast Cottage and I cast I cast Grief all in the same turn. So yeah. So again, I'm gonna tutor for the Relic, Cottage back Grief, five mana Relic, three total mana, Evoke Mold Drifter, draw Grief, cast Grief for two mana, and then that's a two one blocker. I get the blue mana from the Relic. Easy line. No! <laughs> oh no. If they have a land <laughs> and they can just start copying that with their freaking fable. Oh no. What a disaster. Potential disaster. We could also just draw an Acerac and win right now. <laughs> Shut up, Doom. <laughs> They have push even if we combo. If they tap out for Mold Drifter, they don't have push up. Yeah, they also they discarded um, push to the Fable. They're not hard casting. They hate comping Mold Drifter with three one. Maybe they, maybe that was a bit too much for them, huh? <laughs> okay, four cards in hand. Cast an Inquisition. Cast an Inquisition. Then they have a bolt. They still they still have the bolt in hand. Yeah. Bolt does not stop me from comboing if I draw Acerac for turn. I wonder if it's maybe better to get Golos here. Probably not. Worst draw on the deck. You know what? Let me just go Moldrifter now. Mold, now Moldrifter on top into just 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 cast Moldrifter for three mana. Have a one one. They cast Moldrifter. We get to cast Moldrifter. Look at our beautiful mana base. Urborg, Coffers, Mortuary Mire, Witch's Cottage. I can't imagine a more beautiful thing. They have Bolt. This line is this. I know they have Bolt. This line is the best line with the knowledge that they have Bolt available to us. They can Bolt the Grief if we Grief instead. Sadly, I only have one Cottage. Damn it. Acerac off the top? Oh, not off the top. Under, under two cards. <laughs> Maybe they'll cast it and it'll bounce back to my hand. That would be sick. If, it, if they hit it. Weird, I was thinking... I was also thinking that I was going to draw Golos for some reason.
Gold would have been pretty good. It's a 2 4 on this board. Can, if it survives, it can set up for a spin. Doesn't get pushed, doesn't get bolted. They're gonna cast the Golos. They can get a Saga, maybe. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so, obviously, Acerac is likely a win. Golos is still a solid draw. Muldrifter is a solid draw. <laughs> okay, they. <laughs> Golos for Saga. Funny game. Yeah, now we need a four white lane lane, huh? Alright. Acerac off the top. Manifesting it. One in eleven chance. Yes! <laughs> Ragavan who? Ragavan who? Modern is dominated by Acerac. Literally Ragavan who? <laughs> well, my rag there. Oh, I forgot. Sorry, I got tap for mana. <laughs> They're Ragavan stole my Golos. Who cares? <laughs> I'm in the dark pool, baby. Ragavan cannot hurt you when you're in the dark pool. <laughs> There's no Ragavan in that dark pool. <laughs> I'm in the dark pool. Maybe we can go through the other dungeon just for fun. Just one time for fun to demoralize the Jun player. Okay, let's go let's go through this loop one more time. Maybe they'll concede. And if not, let's do. We could do like a little bit of psychic damage. I'm in the dark pool right now. Yeah, really role playing the D and D. Hopefully they're not a bear barbarian. Squeed, thank you for the 38 months. Appreciate you. I'm in the dungeon of the mad mage now. Guess I'm looking for like Golos. Cause you just like know every time you draw cards against uh the Jun player, they just recoil in pain and fear every time you draw an extra card. Mostly looking for a Golos, I think. I think Golos probably demoralizes them the most. I'm starting to like know which dungeons are which two, which is... Okay, two lands here. I'm starting to like actually, you know, know the dungeons, which is fun. Don't have to look look at it every single time. <laughs> Again, I, my opponent's not conceding, so we're just gonna mentally uh, decapitate them for next game. Hey, <laughs> die, Ragavan, die. Okay, so then I'll also okay. We have we have plenty of revolt here. <laughs> Or going through Mad Mage to hurt my opponent's uh, psyche. I'm ahead. I'm ahead three minutes on clock. I actually have plenty of time to do this. <laughs> I'm ahead three minutes on the clock. <laughs> my opponent's had the hard decision every turn of attacking with Ragavan and casting the cards in their hand. <laughs> Andar, a little bit musty, thank you. Yeah, 
Yeah, taking a nice break in the other dungeon. Oh, let me hit him with the please, it's Christmas. I feel like this one might get a might get a concession. <laughs> Eventually. Please, it's Christmas. It's Christmas in the dark pool opponent. <laughs> Please, a Christmas miracle. Jun player loses any amount of value. Challenge. Challenge impossible. Still ahead on clock. <laughs> Still ahead on the clock. <laughs> imagine, imagine going through the dark pool, going through the dungeon of the bad mage for fun, and still being ahead on clock. <laughs> oh man. Uh, let me go ahead and grief them. Get my hand a little bit smaller and maybe see any extra info. Wow, Tarmogoyf. Tendrils is not legal in modern. I, I, I refuse to play any card that is just dead but makes you click less. If there's like a card that exists that is like good and playable and lets you click less, I'm like more open to it. I thought that Shieldred maybe would. So I was kind of interested in playing a Shieldred, but uh, it, it only gains you life. It doesn't hit your opponent for any really when you're looping. Okay, now we're behind on clock. Please, sir, can I have a concession? Yeah, no, Gra Grape Shot, this is a blue-black deck that is not ever storming. Like, Grape Shot is not a good card in the shell, you know what I mean? And again, like, I, I hate the idea of having to play a dead card in your, like, your three-card definitive combo, you know what I mean? It's like... Okay, we th this, this will save us some clicks using the treasures. Um, I, 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 I just, can't, I can't bring myself to do it. I'm in the dark pool, though. I can't stop playing Bitter Titanium. That deck is sick. I want to play it again at some point. So, like, the, the thing, too, here is, like, I have 16 minutes on my clock, so I'm going to be able to finish this match and click through the combo again. Yeah, we do play some Vintage Cube. Um, we played it on stream, actually, the other day. Um, we did one league. I might do a league today. We'll see how, how I'm feeling. And then we also can go through that other dungeon for the last point of damage. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the other thing about playing a grape shot. You still have to find the freaking grape shot, <laughs> and you still have to like storm for it a lot. It's just like uh, you you can't, you know. We're not as blessed as arena players, where like our tutors just like don't have to like our tutor targets don't have to be in our deck sometimes. We can we can't conjure the power nine to our library. Yeah, so the storm count was only showing up the other day because we had fluster storm in our deck. Don't have fluster storm, so it's not popping up for us. Almost done. Almost done. Almost done. Actually, don't even think we need to float any more mana. Yeah, that was our last trip to the dark pool. 
We can play Wish over Profane 2. That card sucks. Wish is so much worse than Profane Tutor. I don't know. Again, it's just like, you can't. You just can't make your deck worse to save yourself clicks because you still have to click a million times anyways with whatever card you're saving with. It's okay. Just, you know, just get good. That's my advice. <laughs> We're out of that dark pool. All right, let's go. I think I want to go off of Grief, in Path of Peril, in Shriek Balls. Then cut one of the Undying effects. Usually cut the Rebirth of the Draw. Yeah, just play the deck of paper is your best bet and watch me suffer. <laughs> Gonna have to play fast, I guess. Somewhat fast. It's not against the rules to not concede to a combo, but... You're, uh, you know... I think it's somewhat lame. <laughs> uh, that's really close. I don't like to mulligan too aggressively in this kind of matchup. I'm gonna mulligan them, but it's also on the six. I think I keep this on six. Probably go to five. This hand's good if it draws one land. It is pretty bad if the Heartless Summoning gets, like, thought seized. I don't know if I can afford to, like, Keep the second Heartless Summoning. I think I actually can. I could just put back the Acerac, find one later. Always hard to like play around a discard spell on a mulligan. I think this is one of like the very rare hands that can. Do you feel bad about cutting a, a Malak Rebirth over in Dying Malice? We have, we have 24 lands in the deck, although four of them are Cabal Coffers right now. In paper, I'd still make you tap and untap every loop, saying I'm waiting for the board state to advance. You you can't do that. The, like the the that the board the loop does advance the board state. It drains you for one. You can't. If someone's demonstrating a loop, you can't just say no. You have to go through it. That's not how it works. <laughs> a judge a judge will make you either respond or die to the loop. Jk, I see, I see. Ooh, there we go. Was Tomb of Annihilation. So the, th the, the problem with Tomb of Annihilation is Acerex says if you've gone through Tomb of Annihilation, you lose the bounce clause. Like, you, you only get to bounce Acerex if you haven't completed Tomb of Annihilation. I guess I'll just get Watery Grave this turn, and then... I'll, 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 I'll be very likely going to just cast Golos, get Coffers next turn. I love the curve of Heartless Summoning into Golos. Golos really is the card that ties the room together, where it's, it's, it's a legend for Relic, curves well with Heartless Summoning, gives you mana for your Acerac, it, it gives you card advantage to like dig for your Acerac. It just it just really is that card, you know? Ah! Tarmogoyf. Yeah, Heartless Summoning does discount Evoke Cost, so one mana to Evoke a Mold Drifter with Heartless Summoning in play. I'll block the Goyf if they attack. Um, Decided to run in 6 ping, I think that's fine. Uh, multiple Summonings do stack, but you basically never want to play two Heartless Summonings out since. Um, it kills all your mold drifters and all your griefs and your shriek malls if you do. And then like holding them to like pitch to grief is like a little bit relevant. Although I did board out my griefs in this matchup. Could have left one or two in. Ouch. Six seven. I'm sorry for making fun of you, Targoyf. Uh, you know I didn't mean it. You know I didn't mean it. Wisdom Shroomy, thank you for the 11 months. It's a long time. Okay, so let's go. Heartless Summoning. I could evoke Mold Drifter, Suspend Profane Tutor. I might just be dead, though. I think I need to cast this and get a blocker in play. Okay. Path is a good draw. Goif, 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 Goif. Number th just play two more Goifs. Besage you. So Besage you actually gives me a lot of mana. 
Ooh, I can also cottage back Golos right now. Let's do that. So this is five, six, seven mana. So I can play. I can I can cast Golos and cast Path of Peril if I Legend roll my Urborg, which is fine. Oh, also the Goyf becomes a four-five. Dude, have you ever seen a channel, a channel Tarmogoyf, a sort of channel Beseju shrink a Goyf by two? <laughs> My opponent channel Beseju, and then their Goyf shrunk by two. How could you ever play around that? <laughs> what, what can you do? Yeah, we have a Cataract for Golos. So we're going to go cast Golos, uh, cast Path of Peril off the Legend Ruled Urborg, and get the Cataracts in play. Dungeon combo puke. Good feedback. No! This is what I get for reading... For reading dungeon combo puke as a Twitch comment. I forget to top my Urborg for mana. What if I co-opted to your stream and said, X deck that you're playing puke? How would you feel? Yeah, but Seiju shrunk Goyf because I got Witch's Cottage and put Golos on top, which removed Artifact and Creature from the graveyard. <laughs> I'd be okay with that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Oh no! We baited the second Tarmogoyf! That's what we did. We baited the second Tarmogoyf. <laughs> uh, okay, I think this gives us enough mana to spin and path. Yeah, exactly enough. Baited the second Goyf all along. <laughs> Into three Relic of Legends? What? It's not like it's particularly good, but it's funny. <laughs> Probably tutor Acerac next turn. Don't need to attack here. Although attacking makes me need less click. As a second goalless man? I don't think so. I think I, I didn't have enough mana to like sink into it, right? Or like at the very least if I did, you'd probably still just want to cast Path of Peril. Yeah, 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 but this this, this does let us spin Golos twice, that is true. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tutor up maybe just tutor up coffers. No, let's tutor up Acerac. Tutor up Acerac and then just spin, I think. I do only have two Heartless Summonings left. You have a white mana floating. Oh, I right, sorry, I thought I had another black. No mana floating. We get to go push. Shriek Maw. And then... White, red, green, blue, black. Uh, I guess I can't really coffer as effectively anyway, so I'll just play this. Okay. So let's go Profane Tutor. I don't know what I'm giving, getting with Profane Tutor, actually. I'll probably just get a backup Acerac. Um, attack with the Golos, then cast Heartless Summoning Golos post combat. We're sadly, we're exactly one. Oh no, I had, I still, have, I still have the win. I still have the win actually. I still have the win because I can go Heartless Summoning, Golos, and then I can use the Golos for Relic of Legends mana to cast the Easter Act. And this attack saves me like, like literally thirty clicks. <laughs> I love this deck. This deck is sick. It's really not one we can play very often, so this is like a special treat to get to play it. Um, because it is uh, <laughs> very click intensive. But I have 10 minutes on the clock to dark pool nine times, very doable. And for, I don't know, I think for, for those of you who are, have the 
mindset. Make your opponent uh, clicks because they can time out. I disagree with your philosophy, but at least hear this one appeal, right? If that's your attitude, I'm going to make them click because they might time out. In situations like this, where I'm, I'm just not going to time out, why are, why, are, why are we making me click through it, you know? This, in these moments, you should definitely be conceding to save yourself some time and save your opponent some time. There we go. And my opponent has heard my appeal. That's what it's all about, baby. I'm going to keep this. Any black card lets me scam. We have Cabal Coffers, Urbor. We have Blue Mana. If it becomes more popular, they consider saving the dungeon path. I doubt it. They like basic wizards like never like does stuff like that. But it would be it would be cool if you could save a dungeon path for Acerac combo. Oh, I was talking to a friend of mine last night about getting into modern. I should have recommended this deck. <laughs> Not magic online. <laughs> okay, Misty Hallowed Fountain, Aether Vial. Misty Hallowed Fountain, Aether Vial. I don't know what that is. Taxes? No. Humans? Maybe. I don't know. Humans? Human variant, I guess. Spirits? Oh, yeah, spirits. I think I like that one. So if we draw a black card, we can go Relic of Legends into Grief Malachi Rebirth, maybe. It'd be nice. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we're about to find out. There are players in the moto who do this for a living, part of the world, so sometimes whenever time is something they gain. No, I think I I mean it, that, that could be true some of the time. I understand like playing for playing for time um can can be relevant and uh for for people who do it for their income. I've done it to supplement my income too and make ends meet. Um But like if you're but if you're sitting and waiting an extra thirty minutes to lose anyways, you're actually losing income. Um, so I think I, I disagree with that philosophy, although it is somewhat contextual. It is somewhat contextual. Spirits it is, though. Very cool. Can't spell Queller or Golos. What did I recommend to my friend last night? Well, I recommend what I recommend everybody, really. Like, I just kind of talk about how, like, modern, modern, like, you can play, like, any archetype you want. And, and like, modern, in a lot of ways, is a format of self-expression. So, so I, I really just recommended to like look through a lot of content, look at a lot of deck lists, and just like find something that speaks to you, which like maybe is like a little bit of a cop out, but it, but it, it is like genuinely what I recommend because like I, I gave some options for like good budget friendly decks that are competitive and stuff like prowess. Like I think prowess specifically is the best um, the best value you can get for like competitiveness on an axis of. Um, Hold on, can we? I don't think we can play this Relic of Legends. Like competitiveness versus like how cheap it is. Um, but like not everybody likes to play Prowess, and so I, I really do just find a deck that you feel like you can express yourself with, you know. Uh, DRC, thank you for the three pack. If you can post a link in chat, I can take a look. Can you play Bloodbird Elf? You can. Bloodbird Elf won a European tournament recently. I play Hammer. What does it say about me as a person? You're hard headed and. Um, and, uh, you work in construction for a living, and, um, you own a hammer. Okay, Oba, mm. Mila, Crafty Companion. If an opponent attacks one or more playing you control, oil to counties, players, walker, target spell or ability, you may draw a card. Oh, I always, I always like this card. I always, I always read this card, like, I kind of like this. It's just like, um... Okay, what's what's it's the, it's like the one man enchantment on a on a creature. The target give me a card. I, this is this is not the first time I've like seen this card in a deck deck. I'm like, wow, I like that. Uh, I'm not sure how exactly how good it is. I can't remember what the other side does either. It's not flipping for me. Okay, let's go. Cast Acerac. Then we can start venturing into the left dungeon. Yeah, Shaper Sanctuary. So the other side is six Randall Planeswalker. I mean, in the late game. 
Return a creature graveyard to battlefield with haste. Drop a discard. Yeah, you'll uh, I'll probably not cast that mode very often, but it's you know it's nice that it's there. Trolling deep, take it for three months. Appreciate you. Um, I guess I should be actually. Oh, I, I, sorry, I don't need to fetch. Oh, I could be making mana. Oh, I forgot to be make man, make mana off these. So I can make one more mana here. Okay, they're just conceding. Yeah. Okay, let me sideboard real quick. So I'm going to bring in the Path of Perils and the Shriek Maws. I kind of want to keep the Griefs in. Well, maybe we'll turn one Grief. I want to keep all the Undying effects in, though, if I'm bringing in all these Shriek Maws. We trim like. I might trim like two relics. We can still like dig and find them, but we can play like a, maybe a bit of a more controlling game plan. I want to keep in all the goloses and everything. Oh, let me actually go down on, on Profane Tutor. Profane Tutor is kind of slow. Actually, what if I play zero Profane Tutors? I actually like this a lot. Profane Tutor seems pretty bad against them. Okay, I think I recommend that you play Blood Moon in the main deck over Magus. There's like, you know, just, I think... Magus being weak to Solitude, Fury, Lightning Bolt, and Holy Heat makes me prefer Blood Moon in the main. I'd also be interested in the fourth season Pyromancer, probably over the second Mila. Mila's pretty good, but I think you probably just want, like, one copy exactly. Um... I, I also, like, really just kind of have to clap my hands a little bit about this deck list because, like, I've, I've sat down to build, like, white-red, like, Ephemerate scam without the, like, the Stoneblade package. Um, and I've, with, with Obosh, and I've, I've, I don't know, I don't know exactly what I was doing different, but I've sat down to build this deck a few times and, like, never really, like, felt like it looked good to me. And this looks good. I don't, I, <laughs> and this does look good. So, like, to, to some extent, just good job. This is something I've tried to do and like failed a couple times. I, I, would, I do want to see Blood Moon over Magus. I'm going to see Force Spire over first, second melee. You can play one. Um, I don't know if I love this blue splash just for Teferi in the sideboard in your Blood Moon deck. Um, like, and I would be interested in like the fourth Blood Moon in the side. Maybe like one or two Maguses and have six total. I don't know if that number is really good. I like Lauren a lot. I'd probably play more Lauren. I think Stormbreath Dragon's not super well positioned at the moment. I'd probably play Hallowed Moonlight over Teferi also. Hallowed Moonlight, I think. Um, covers a lot of the same bases you need to cover, but without requiring you to splash an extra color. Um, uh, I, I also usually like to play a giant killer in the sideboard of my Ranger Captain decks for Merktide and Hammer, and sometimes sometimes Archon decks, sometimes Primetime decks. But I, I, I basically I'm always happy to have that effect, so I, I would recommend I would definitely recommend you play one. So like. Three Blood Moons main, fourth Blood Moon in the side. Those two other Blood Moons can be the Giant Killer, um, second Lauren, and the Fairies can be Hallowed Moonlights, and then the third Stormbreath Dragon can be like one Magus, can be fourth Relic, it can be third Lauren, kind of like whatever you want really. You can also play Wear Tear over Lauren, but I think in your Ephemerate deck you want to play Lauren. Um, okay, so I actually don't have three mana this turn, so I guess we just cast Grief. Master Beersman, think of the 10 months, appreciate you. Mm. Image copying grief here is actually really annoying. I think I'll play my Coffers tab so I can maybe cottage back Moldrifter after they grief it. Oh, can't moonlight with Obosh, right, of course. That's the thought. So maybe you splash for like Flusterstorm instead. I know I don't love the splash, but uh, I I would I would still likely probably play Flusterstorm over to Fairy anyways. <laughs> Coffer's bad. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for your comments. Can't block with the grief, so I guess we attack with the grief. If I'm cutting the blue splash, would I consider swapping out prismatics since I only have two colors? I think prismatic's still fine, but um, like maybe maybe you are right. Maybe you still just like have the blue lands in the deck and you play Flusterstorm over Teferi. I think I think that that's probably what I recommend doing at the moment. But 
do some thinking about it, do some playtesting. I, I like I really like the list though. I really like it. I don't I don't I really can't remember exactly what I was doing different when I sat down to build that deck in the past, but just seeing it in front of me there, I like the look of it a lot. Maybe it's like the combination of me liking Blood Moon plus Ranger Captain a lot at the moment. Maybe maybe I didn't have Blood Moon or Ranger Captain in some other versions. You know I'm a sucker for Ranger Captain Ragavan decks. Okay, so we can cottage back Moldrifter next turn if we brick. Which we do. Yeah, the problem with Deafening Silence, it doesn't stop Creativity, it doesn't stop Charless Agent, doesn't... Um... Honestly, I think like Modern would be like a more balanced format if Charless Agent was like somehow a non-creature Cascade spell. And Deafening Silence could be a real sideboard card. Draw, st draw step discard. Well, my opponent would have to have a third Phantasmal image. I don't think we're supposed to play around that. The card I had a hard time cutting was Figure of Destiny. <laughs> Congratulations on cutting Figure. That card's so bad. Honestly, I would play Shivan Devastator over Figure of Destiny as like, like a late game Ranger Captain tutor target. Why are they leaving the Spirit back? The double block? I mean, I would take any double block here. Um, let me though, I think, I think, maybe I'm not supposed to grab the swamp yet. I think it's fine. Can't spell quality this. Okay, so maybe I can chump block with the, um, the, the mold drifter and a dying malice after we get the mold drifter out of the hand with the grief. And so now, if they vi yeah, I mean, I'm trading a creature, grief for a creature, if they violate it and block. So I'm, I'm definitely gonna, definitely gonna attack. Okay. So I'm happy. So their hand is drugs so captain, two mystery cards. We could be in like not great shape here, but um, if we're able to block and dying malice, draw two more cards. We have a lot of good top decks. And it's, it's obviously really nice that the spell queller is out of my opponent's hand at the moment. We are dead to another lord. Not dead to that um, right now. Dead to that plus another spirit. But obviously, like, not being able to undie my... Oh, no, we are, because this is... just Sorry, it's three, two, three times three, never mind. Uh, not being able to die the Mold Drifter would also be bad. So we would have drawn Acerac, which is the combo card. Oh, well. Oh, well. Um... Okay, I think I'm going to actually just be, well, can you target Grief? Oh, no, I, I punted the game. Yeah, I could have targeted their Grief with the Undying Effect, and then I could have targeted the Grief with the Undying Effect, and then untapped an Acer Ectin 1. Good line, good line. Yeah, I, I did consider Trophy Mage, but I just don't really want a fifth Relic. I think four is, like, the right number. Okay, let's keep those. Ah, oh, that, that would've been a sick line. Keep, I haven't played against a Phantasmal image in a while. Keep that in my data bank, though. Turn one Aether Vial. Well, that's a turn three combo. What can they even have? They can't have. They can't Queller. They can't Mausoleum Wanderer. Their fetch, fetch shocking is like they fetch shock, and that's all of a sudden like thirty less clicks for me too. It's so nice. All right. Uh, they have to have like Solitude or Force of Negation. Or yeah, or Subtlety. Or I misclick. But what's nice is like you have to misclick on the mana, you have to misclick in like the first couple clicks, which is harder. Yeah, and we have 20 minutes on the clock too. And we have a mole drifter on top, baby. We're about to be in that dark pool any second.
Turn three, baby. Turn three. Uh, no. How did we win game one, actually? Did they concede? I can't remember. We might have, we might have won without the combo. I think we won just by like, spinning Golos for value. Maybe not. Yeah, they, they just conceded to me like Golosing a bunch. We are in that dark pool, though. It's maybe a little early to hit him with the please it's Christmas. Usually I like to just do the loop like two times before I beg for mercy. Have I thought of an explanation of combo copy paste? Mm, I use, I've I've done that in the past. I feel like this one is like so obvious though. Like they should be able to see that I'm I'm dark pooling them and I'm gonna keep dark pooling them. Um. Although my last run opponent was kind of confused. I mean, I have twenty minutes on the clock. Hit it with the please it's Christmas. I'm doing this for y'all chat. They're hoping misclicks as they're out. The thing is like, I, ha I have to like misclick like three times because these each treasure token represents like me saving myself from a misclick. Like at this point, it's like impossible for me to misclick like that many times in a row, even for me, the misclick king. Please, it's December 23rd. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> surely it's December 10th. I'm in the dark pool. Am I using any razor products in my setup? Uh, nope. Not even my razor flip phone. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes, based and cool. Based and cool. And Tritino. We missed. I'm gonna keep this. And then in game three, they had like really nutty living in draw. And then we lost to Oops All Spells because we didn't have Ley Lines. So now we have Ley Lines. And then now we're 2 0. We won both of our game one. No, sorry, we didn't win game one against uh, Oops All Spells. I don't, think, I don't think the macro thing works because like the cards in hand dance around a little bit too much. Okay, so we're getting scammed here. One kind of nice thing about this is like, if they take both my Heartless Summonings, I can push a Grief, and if they don't, I get to keep a Heartless Summoning. <laughs> Throw in A for the memes. <laughs> it's kind of hard to triple green for the memes. Is this deck memes are actually competitive? I mean, so like, is this deck a tier one strategy? No. Is this deck powerful and capable of winning games and attacking from an angle that people aren't used to playing against yes and uh we are the deck is definitely feeling good got a link for the next time opponent can see all right we'll link it link it then <laughs> oh yeah treasures rave easy huh and i also think like when you do when you play decks like this um okay let me grief my opponent when you play decks like this that are like powerful and like somewhat competitive and able to. Hmm. I guess I have to take this Fury. I could take the Fain Death instead, but I, it, I'm just it's just so bad if they top deck another uh, uh, Undying Effect, which they're more likely to. Sorry, but when you when you find a deck like this that is like very close and very powerful and attacking from a unique angle, um, sometimes that means that there's like it can be improved a little bit either through cards that exist, which I think right now the deck's like pretty close to maximized, or when new cards get printed, the deck gets better. And like for a deck like this, I think that's a great example 
of a deck that, that is going to get better as new cards get printed because it's a heartless summoning deck as soon as you know there's another blue or black or any color creature that fits really well in the shell um that the deck gets better and that's a big part of the reason like why i do what i do and like you know when we're we do so much brewing when new cards come out like they upgrade older brews that are very close We may just die to grief this game, although now with Heartless Summoning, we have tons and tons of good top decks. Golo, Small Drifter, Fatal Push. I guess Grief is not that good. Acerac is really good, though, with the summoning in play. Oh, uh, oh, so I guess they get done dying this. Hmm. Should just pick the initiative? I wish. There's nothing new in this deck, though. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that is true. Like, not every brew starts with a new card. But this is, this is like, a, you know... There's also, like, plenty of decks in Modern that have yet to be discovered, too. You know what I mean? Some of these cards are, like, relatively new. Like, Relic of Legends is, like, two sets ago. But that, that'll happen some... Like, you know, not, there's plenty of <laughs> open uh, space to explore in Modern. Okay, they pitched the Kroxa. The problem is, of course, I like I just like have to draw Acerac. Even then, it's like maybe not even enough because I can't double block. Maybe Mole Drifter. I think the eight key combo deck was a good example. Like all those cards existed for a really long time. The Sultai Neo brand deck I was playing recently is a good example of that. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of open uh, open space. Okay. Got scammed. I wonder how different that game is if I take the Fane Death. You know, I've never boarded a lane line against scam. Maybe it's good. It turns off all their scam, turns off Kroxa. It's not amazing. So Shriek Ball is an out to Fury. I think I maybe need one of those. It seems meh. I think it's a bit better than meh. Like, this is probably turns off like close to 10 cards in their deck. I think I like this plan. Yeah, I also, I mean, I'm, I'm sliding out the Grief, so... Pitching the Grief gets a little less equity there. Uh, I don't like to mulligan, but I think I do have to mulligan this. All right, here we go. Um, As much as I love the Muldrifter here, I think, I, I think because I have no blue mana, that's the card that gets put back. Let me play Coffers in turn one, so if somehow they have like all red lands and uh, <laughs> Thoughtseize, they can't Thoughtseize. Uh, Relic, yeah, Relic of Legends is a combo with a, a oh, a great command, yeah. It is nice that, like, with Golos in the deck, the Relic of Legends is a little bit better. Just, you know, a very small margin, but. Okay, take my Profane Tutor. Okay, now I'll play this so I can hold up the push. Put a pass back, five cards in their hand. Blue mana online. Makes me a lot more resilient to Blood Moon to have this card, of course. Okay, I can just Shriek Maul that. Not a problem. Maybe, I, I would kind of like to draw land and hard cast the Shriek Maul. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I mind just evoking Mill Drifter here. I don't feel like I'm on a particular rush to kill the 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 Magus, or like at the very least, I, th I think I think that this is the better line. Okay, now now I've even I've even gotten very lucky and just drawn Basic Swamp so I can push with the Mill Drifter Revolt, and then I can value Acerac pretty easily here. These coffers are plus one mana, and each time I cast Acerac, it's I get to tap it to the Relic too. I keep trying the Fiddlebender Brew. I've been mostly like cutting Fiddlebender from the Fiddlebender deck lately um, and thinking that that's correct, but 
the like Bono White artifacts or Boros artifacts is fine, yeah. Okay, take the Acerac, unfortunately. Although, if we draw a Cottage, we can maybe Cottage that back or fetch land for Cottage. Right, just gonna pass back. Certainly lots of good draws here. And three Leyland of the Voids, I guess. I think with my life total, that's not too bad. My opponent may... They probably should Castle Lock Dwayne. But I'm just thinking about them being at 13. I don't have to click 40 more times. Okay, so I guess we'll be hard casting Shriek Ball next turn. To block Ragavan. Oh man, I would have loved to draw Golos. See if they have a land to go loose. Ah, it would have such a great draw. They do have a land. And they're not casting it. I feel like I can't, Im I don't really know what they can have. It makes them not want to cast it there. Like, I don't know that they need to hold anything up, you know. So what am I going to Profane Tutor for next turn? Muldrifter seems like a pretty good option with this Undying Malice in my hand. Like if they just kill my Shriek Maw in a turn, I don't think I'm say I don't think I'm going to use Undying Malice. They use the treasure. Yeah, Acerac is probably best, especially like because this can save it from a, a removal spell too. Be worried about dying to a bolt. I guess I can make the grief unable to attack. Yeah, I think it's got to be Acerac. The grief of an Urborg, which is my worst top deck. So thank you, Ragavan. Although I guess I would have shuffled it away with Profane Tutor. Still happy to get one of these out of the deck. Just rip summoning, yeah. Easy peasy, huh? Yeah, they have to have like two more terminates, so like terminate push. It's not that likely. If we draw a land, also that's, you know, I think a whole extra Easter egg cast for turn. Hmm. So we can either use this as another protection effect or for coffers. So right now we have minus two plus eight, nine. So we could, have, we could have 11 mana here. I think the extra protection effect is probably a little bit better. It's it's like certainly close. I guess I didn't need to. I guess I shouldn't have tapped the other coffers though. They don't even use one removal spell. Gain a life though. So you go gain a life, scry two. Make this unable to attack. Oh, now they now they're using one. Okay. I'm gonna use the one that makes me not lose life. Too bad it doesn't enter untapped and I can't one one less mana, but we get an extra trigger, which is nice for one mana instead of three. Oh scribe one. I always I always think this one is scribe two for some reason. So bottom of that. And then twisted twisted caverns to make this unable to attack next turn, so I don't die to Ragavan plus grief plus bolts. Scry two. Keep Mold Drifter on top, and then I guess I can just do the skeletons to block the Ragavan. It should be Milo's grave. Let me just double check. Yeah. So maybe, maybe if they can clear these through, they can get the Ragavan, which kind of stinks, but that's probably okay. And I guess I'm going to play this because I'm kind of scared of my life total, so maybe didn't need the protection spell after all, but probably okay. 
It is Ragavan, three mystery cards. They might have Fury. They have to have like Fury red card, Ragavan though. Dothy Voidwalker. Surely they're not gonna dash into my skeletons, right? Okay, Season Pyromancer. I don't know why they would cast, they shouldn't, they should not have cast Voidwalker before Season Pyromancer. It's just miss sequence. Discard Ragavan, Fain Death. Got two cards in the hand. Let's just start off by trying to get through this dungeon and seeing if uh, that's going to be good enough by itself here. Scry 3. Uh, graveyard, all of these, as I'm really just looking for Heartless Summoning to win the game. And I would, if I'm not getting Heartless Summoning, I'd prefer to find, like, Golost or Moldrifter. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Skeletons fall, though. So we still have 20 minutes on the clock. I feel like my opponent is never getting me to time out. This is game two. They're at 12 life. We'll show them the uh, the loop. I guess if I um, double coffers now, actually, I, I have like a lot less clicks I have to do. Which is kind of cool. A treat, less clicks. Still have to do a bunch of them though. Okay. They concede though. Awesome. So we were in the dark pool. Now we're gonna keep three. <clears throat> so maybe maybe I don't want the Shriek Maw if I if my plan is to like ley line their furies. I don't know. Having one way to kill a Shriek a Fury is probably still important. It also kills Ragaman. All right, let's just run it back. Let's just run it back. Okay, we have, yeah, we have a, oh, we have a keepable hand. We can kill a Ragavan, we can suspend Profane Tutor, we have Urborg Coffers. No, please don't flame anyone, Meat. You, you can let me banter a bit, but yeah. I, <laughs> I, I understand. We, we, we respect each other even even if there's a silly Twitch chat every once in a while. But, it, you know, in, in a lot of ways, maybe that comment did good because the comment was so silly that now you're here. <laughs> the comment was so bad that a YouTube-only watcher is here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Stoneforge fan. How much with this? Um, no, this is only like my th like third or fourth league with this version. We four won with the other version on Monday. What was the comment? I was playing the um, the Dark Steel deck, and so, and the comment was like, "Wait, how is this better than just Stoneforge Mystic Cauldra?" Which is like <laughs> just you know, very stand. Why is this better than like very standard, <laughs> like the Vance Stone Blade? That was just like just apples and oranges. Like just not usually a very helpful comment. They missed their third land drop. Let's go. Also, having this uh, Relic of Legends and Swamp makes me not too worried about a Blood Moon, which is nice. It is fun. It is funny how like, so like obviously Blood Moon is like this big, scary, important card in Modern, and like, like a lot of decks I play just can't beat it. But the fact that I just happen to be playing like Dark Steel Ingot, <laughs> You know, just random three mana mana rock. All of a sudden, my deck is just not that bad to Blood Moon. <laughs> kind of like how like EDH decks. Oh, they're really scared of this of uh, Elish Norn. But oh wait, I'm just playing a deck without ETB effects, or I'm playing a deck with lots of removal. It just doesn't matter, you know. It's just funny. Um, I have Cascading Cataracts in hand, so I think I'm getting Golos here. And then we'll go cast cataracts. Cast Golos. Get other coffers. 
And we even have the Amalek Rebirth to protect it here if they have Terminate. <laughs> An old meme. Never, never letting down the Gusty Elemental token. Okay, I will say this. This feels amazing. <laughs> Malik rebirth your Golos. How could any opponent continue after this psychic damage? Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> just, there's just no way. Ugh. Obviously, they got kind of mana screwed there. Not the most exciting game three, but... <laughs> we also just keep having <laughs> Herborn Coffers, which is sick. Get Water Grave turn one. Ah, GLHF from our Amulet Titan opponent. That's okay. Love to draw a black card to be able to grief this turn without losing my Profane Tutor. Not that one, though. <laughs> that one is just going to let me combo kill turn four, so... Two ships passing each other in the night. Happy to be on the play with a turn four win against Titan. Hopefully it's fast enough. Um, if they have Bounce Land Titan, it is not going to be fast enough, unfortunately. A black card is pretty likely to be a win here, though. I did not draw a black card. So I can invoke Moldrifter, and if I draw a land black card... If I draw a black card here and draw a land in my, in my draw step turn, then I can go... That, and, and I can I can combo kill all in one turn, right? With Relic, Heartless Summoning, Acerac, I'll have... Yeah, I'll have enough mana. So yeah, I think I evoke Moldrifter looking for a black card, and then... Oops. If I, if I find a land also, in addition to, the, to like this black card, we're going to be good to go, probably. Okay, so I found the land, which means I can win next turn. I don't think I'm supposed to lose my Acerac to Grief to try to stop my opponent from tightening me. Um, if they do have Bounce and Titan, I think I'm dead, but I think I'm more likely for them to just, like, not have it than be trying to, like, I'll top deck them. Maybe that's not Maybe that's not the case, actually. But yeah, maybe, maybe I am just supposed to still Grief. I am dead, right? Maybe I'm not dead. No, I'm dead. Super dead. Hmm. Maybe both. Maybe both Valakits are in their hand, right? <laughs> Somehow, they would have played it last turn. No, I'm super dead. If there wasn't Dryad in play, I wouldn't be dead. I feel like every time you have a turn four kill in your hand against Titan, that's that like they're like guaranteed to have the turn three. I mean, they, they kill on turn three a lot. Okay, we'll bring in the Path of Perils. We'll bring in the Thought Seizes. Probably want like at least one Shriek Maw. Probably no more than three pushes. Trimming a Dying Effect. Trim a Profane Tutor. Fintu is kind of slow. Although Profintu does find a more you go. Yeah, I guess all, all the, I want all these on the play. So let me trim my uh, two Goloses. Let's try this. I, I, maybe, I don't think I want the Shriek Maul, actually. I think push is just better. I, I know that Shriek Maul can kill Titan, but killing Titan is like probably not how we're supposed to fight this matchup. Orvar copying Titan sounds sexy. Well, we, Orvar only copies things when your opponent makes you discard it, right? Which is not something I think we can do. Okay, on the play. We have our board coffers. We have two thirds of the combo. I would definitely keep this hand against some matchups. I think I need to mulligan a bit more aggressively here. Mm, I kind of wish I had that seven. Okay. Um... So this hand we can just put back. We can put back thoughts. We can put back. We're definitely putting back Undying Malice. I would love for this just to be a six card hand. I think I'm gonna keep the Thoughtseize and just try to top deck. 
Pithy Needle. This doesn't stop my combo, does it? Doesn't, yeah, it doesn't stop Relic because it's a mana ability. I think I'm just taking the Titan. Their hand's pretty bad. If I knew their hand, I would obviously, like, just, like, I've kept the Profane Tutor. They top deck Saga. Saga's such a good draw here. It stops the untap? No, it doesn't. This is a mana ability. Needle does yeah, yeah, needle yeah, the, this 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 tap ability is a mana ability. Needle doesn't stop mana abilities. Yeah, Revoker does. Alright. Classic top deck battle. Yeah, it's not Honor War in Shikaku, although certainly inspired by that card. Certainly inspired by that card. There's a good chance to make a token here. Expedition map. So then there. Construct is a 3 3. Uh, yeah, Mr. Brook Shirk might be okay. They named Hippo with Cavern of Souls. Fantastic draw. Especially if we can find an Undying Effect. No such luck, but we can Cottage back the Moldrifter next turn and play the Relic next turn. Um, I'm just gonna just gonna pass back here. I don't think uh, attacking them matters too much. I will crack my fetch. They didn't cast the needle last turn. I don't know. <laughs> they boarded in this needle. They should have something they want to name with it. They just try to snipe my marsh flats. They named Delta, which is I think the correct choice. That I have two marsh flats in my yard, but it do, it does really seem like my opponent realized mid game that oh wait needle doesn't actually stop the combo <laughs> and too bad because i just ripped the ace rack and we have a turn five win that's 25 months thank you yeah they could name golos Yeah, yeah, naming Relic of Legends doesn't stop it because Needle only stops non-mana abilities and this is a mana ability. So Phyrexian Invoker would, would work, but that card doesn't see really play. You're missing an ER. Any magic card can be pronounced in any way. There is no wrong way to pronounce any magic card. I'm honestly like, I don't I don't like that there's an extra ER this Acerac. It like really is feels very unnecessary to me. So I refuse to pronounce it. They pack it in, thankfully. We're going to game three. Let's uh, run it back. This deck is pretty consistent for a combo deck. Well, we're definitely drawing well today, but yeah. Right, let's mulligan this. Okay, Scam is pretty, pretty nice to have access to. This would just be an easy seven. B Rocco, 17 months, thank you. I think I'd put back the Acerac. How many variations would I like to take it to get here? I mean, this is like the second main variation. The first one wasn't bad either, but I think like Golos is a pretty nice upgrade. Ooh, that's a really good start for my opponent. We also have a good start. Nice to draw a um, another black card so we can suspend Profane Tutor. 
and their hand was definitely weak to this, which is good. Not always weak to the scam. But like second ability is like Urza's. Uh, yeah, yeah, looks like it. Where did my jacket go? I swear I was wearing a jacket earlier. That's over here. The splashing into green or red for acceleration actually speed me up or make the consistency worse. What acceleration? You know what I mean? People say this kind of stuff all the time. Let's do this color for this type of effect without like suggesting specific cards. But at this point in the testing, I really need you to suggest specific cards for me to consider them very seriously. Red for Ragavan? <laughs> yeah, red pretty bad in your Heartless Summon. Or Ragavan pretty bad in your Heartless Summoning deck. So my opponent's hand is Gruel Turf, two mystery cards. I don't like how quickly they're tapping this mana. Okay, it's fine. Okay, this is was fine all along. So I think if the Fatal Push puts me a little bit ahead on this race. I didn't know about that second saga, did I? Hope I didn't. This is four attacks though. They play saga, the next turn they make a token. Maybe a little bit behind. So I don't think I can get Necromentia anymore. Maybe it couldn't ever. I don't know what I'm tutoring for. I did, yeah. I, th I thought I thought I, only, I thought I only knew about the one saga though. I I'm pretty close to just like getting another fatal push. So I attack them down to eight. They make a token. Next turn, push the token. They can't make another token because they played their bounce land to make the first token. Did I win the race? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, so yeah, I think their plan is going to be bounce land, make a token, which I can push, take three, attack them for four, and then because they bounce land, they're not going to be able to make another token. And this grief gets the job done if they don't top deck well. <laughs> and <laughs> they play the one unknown card, which is another dead green bounce land. Perfect. Oh, they bounce the Saga so that they have Titan as a life top deck. But they do have to top deck. But they do have to top deck. Oh, um, no, I'm not supposed to play that. Because then I just don't have... <laughs> then I just don't have the two-turn clock. Okay, weird. <laughs> Feels weird to not cast the Heartless Summoning. All right, now they have to top deck Titan this turn. Their hand is uh, three bounce land saga mystery card. Let's go! What a line! I can't. I would have been. It would have been so embarrassing to cast that heartless summoning. I almost did it. Just like I have two mana, I'm gonna cast the two mana card my deck's built around. Don't do that. Don't cast the two mana card your deck's built around. Okay, let's get a trophy prediction. Be an awesome deck to trophy with. Not today though. I'll spawn things with my team months, appreciate you. Okay, I like this hand enough to keep. Guess I'll put back second like Acer Rack. And then I think I'll play the cottage. The, yeah, the thing about Jun Sack with company is as I think that like the scam sacrifice deck is better. Like I have nearly an 80% win rate after like 12 leagues with that deck, and um it's just hard for me to want to play like the version I think is not as good in the same archetype. Okay, we're four five oh match we're up against a Verdant Catacombs. To Overgrown Tomb into Young Wolf. Could be any deck. Could be literally any deck. 
One, one, one thing I, I do like about this deck is when you go turn two summoning, you can go turn three Yawning Portal, Dungeon level, Goblin Bazaar, Lost level, and then it sets you up to just like try to Mad Wizard's Lair into your missing combo piece for the win on turn. Um, on turn four, just like perfectly. If I play Tomb of Diocean D&D &D and my Homebrew Hero, we usually do Homebrew stuff. We've... I'm trying to think if we've ever completed like a official module like i dm'd curse of strahd we didn't finish we i've dm'd lost mine of fendalver we didn't finish we start uh, someone else dm's the storm giants we didn't finish yeah mostly just homebrew stuff we finished like you know several multi-year plus long year campaigns though homebrew which i think are typically typically better if you know if they're better and, and they're worse if they if they're worse <laughs> there it may sound obvious but it's not okay um so we're definitely gonna start off here i did draw the land so i can go yawning portal dungeon level goblin use treasure push wall of roots and then still go for it next turn yeah so okay we'll do that They could also be just as good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, about the same level. It's a Goblin Bazaar. Get the treasure token. Use the treasure token. Push the wall. And then we're, we're very likely to win next turn because we, we have... Okay, so we go Lost Level Runestone Caverns. And I guess, I guess we if we hit the... The relic off runestone caverns then that's not a combo win but we get so but scry two scry three draw three we so we have including our draw step we have nine looks at a relic to win the game and if we don't win the game we're casting we're drawing three cards and casting something for zero mana yeah value acerac is really fun okay we can play urborg yeah, this deck is really cool. It, it took a long time for it to come together. Okay, there's the Relic of Legends. So I can go, I need to go top, top, and then I need to not, I need to go into the graveyard instead of the caverns, which makes two zombies that just die on impact. That's okay, because it doesn't matter. We're just going to win. We get to go bottom, bottom, top. And then we get to cast that for zero mana. And then win the game. I'm I'm really glad that um like I, I, I really did feel like this this version of the deck was gonna be good and like better than the version we played on Monday. But the the clicks, I was a bit worried about the click, but I, I'm happy we played this today. This deck is just so sick. And like I think this would be an awesome paper deck if you're looking for a paper deck. I'm in that dark pool, baby. Yeah, yeah, Yogmoth opponent. Nice click. Nice click intensive deck, huh? Okay. Put it packs it in, as I imagine most Yogmoth players will. And we have the we have needles and ley lines and maybe Shriek Maul. Path of Peril seems good, especially with Leyline. Hmm. Shriek Maul. Shriek Maul seems good. So I, I think when we're boarding in like all this removal, you're supposed to cut your profane tutors. You just like plan on using removal spells instead early. We can cut the fourth relic of legends. Hmm. Not sure what else beyond that. Like I want all my dying effects. I guess I could cut the, I mean, grief is a good too. But you want to keep the undying effects because of the shriek balls, right? A more ego. We have needle instead. Ego can be a little slow, especially on the draw. Maybe you go on the play. I don't know. Everything seems good. We can be above 60 cards post board. We get Trib Golos. Yeah, I know if you Amor Ego Yogg, the deck hardly functions. You have to have it in your hand on turn three. And they can even like Mana Dork out of Yogg on turn three. And then on the, on the draw, your Ego just does nothing. So I think, I think I'm likely to have it on the play. 
they rarely combo for turn four. That's that's I think just not that true. Or like it's not necessarily about them comboing, but they can get a Yogwalt into play on turn three really easily. So I think I just don't want it on the draw. And then obviously it's a you know terrible top deck. Huh. I think I mulligan this. We don't have a Leyline, we have double Urborg. Okay, this is not a one lander because we have the Malachy Rebirth. We also don't have Leyline. Yeah, we have to go to five. Okay, this hand is Leyline. Okay, this hand's actually great. Just put back two lands. I was kind of hoping they'd have a one drop, so my Path of Peril would be good this game. And now I'm hoping that they have an Urborg. Okay. There we go. Play more into that, please. Not a great top deck, but maybe if they have the Seiju or the Werewolf, then this will be effective. Best case scenario, they go like Urborg, two more creatures. Uh, that's like the worst case scenario. <laughs> uh oh. Shriek Ball seems made. It's only hitting dorks. It's it's Shriek Ball is pretty good with the undying effect. I mean, yeah, maybe Shriek Ball is like. I was thinking like Shriek Ball plus undying was solid, especially with Leyline in play. Yeah, maybe it's not as good as I think it is. Well, it's actually a really good draw. Um, I think we're going this way. The scry one. We also need to find like Urborg. As far as Revention turns, ever gonna make this dream? It has in the past before. It's been like a year, at least two years, probably. But we've played it a few times. I don't like this deck because it's gonna force me to learn what the dungeons do. But I mean, if you're playing against it, you really don't have to learn. You just have to like, just sit there and chill and die when it can see when they're clicking through the combo. Second like heart, you know, you never, you never play the second uh, heartless summoning out. I think. Um. So my opponent can kill, sack their whole board to kill my Acerac. Which is what they're deciding to do. Is on YouTube? Maybe. I uh, I think I may it may have been like before I uh, I got the editor for YouTube. Ding. <laughs> Made them sector board, I guess. I mean, it's a it's like a. They got to draw a card off of each of those, so it's calling it a four for one's a little little disingenuous, you know. Down to eight. So I guess we really just want to draw another Acer Act. There's not too much else that's like great here. That thankfully doesn't trigger. Let's play this. Likely gonna settle this in game three, but we have got some good series of draws. I think I think I am on board with the thought that Shriek Maul is kind of mid, so I definitely want the ego on the play, and so we can do something like go down to one Shriek Maul, bring in the ego, bring in the relic, and then play. Maybe we'll play with like two griefs or something. Either two griefs or one profane tutor or the Golos. Yeah, I guess I'll just I'll just play. Um, maybe I'll just play these instead of the the Shriek Mauls. Kind of like that. All right, it's game three. This is sort of the situation where Wish Call Talisman is way better than Profane Tutor. Uh, yeah, when you're top decking and you have like lots of mana, yeah, that's that is the situation. Um, Wish Call Talisman is like way worse on like the first like four or five turns of the game, maybe first four turns of the game. Which are and, and and I think in this deck you have a really good late game, so I would like pretty significantly prefer Profane Tutor. Like Wish Call Talisman, when you tap that card, you would either better like be able to kill it or sack it in response, or 
win the game immediately. Like, you just really don't want to let your opponent Demonic Tutor in this format. Talisman is so much better you can get Opposition Agent. Oh boy, now that's a combo. I've been kind of wanting to find a deck that could Wish Call Talisman and then uh, the, the two mana Sacred Artifactor creature get, get a treasure, draw two cards. I think that would be fun. There was a different deck that people were suggesting that for. It may have been Pioneer. Are the Undying Spells worth it without grief? Oh, right, because they were worth it because of Shriek Maul. Right, right, right. But now, you know, without the Shriek Maul, I guess you just play three tutors. Tutors like a lot better on the play, too. Maybe play... I think, I think I'll think i keep the, the third rebirth in the play. I'm more likely to trim rebirth on the draw. Like, I really wish that, like, whatever, whatever like, card you got... Like, I wish you could tutor for your um, Sack and Artifact, draw two cards, treasure token. I wish you could tutor for that with the Wish Claw. But, I mean, that's, like... I guess it's just, like, a five-mana divination. Never mind. <laughs> uh, very close hand. Have to mulligan. We get to keep this one. Go back second Golos. Yo, Shadow. Getting Thoughtseize. Kind of be interesting if they take Golos or Relic. Gol yeah, Golos is great in this deck. It's really, it's good on curve with Heartless Summoning. It gives you, like, late game mana sync. And then, like, getting, get, being on Herb or Coffers is good with Acer Act, too. Big, big believer in Golos. If this was a Coffers instead of an Herb board, we could turn four Golos here. Gonna have to draw well. I mean, I guess that was always the plan. Uh, I think I'm gonna go Lost Minds of Fandelver for the Scry one. Bottom that. There's a cool 5-0 Asmogori list on Tuesday. I, I, was it like Spider Spaces list with Faithless Salvaging and Emrakul? I did think that that deck was pretty cool. I didn't. I didn't get it the first time I saw it, but now I now I get it. Is this cord for three for your Christ? And cast Yogmoth, a bolt strategy. Let's see if my opponent kills this this time. Probably not without the Heartless Summoning. Next one I can Golos, I can get Coffers, I think I'm casting this a lot more times a turn. Maybe too slow. Is the Dark Souls No Hit Training going to be on stream soon? Uh, I don't know. So like, not today I think. Um, I'm getting close, I'm getting close to like being able to actually attempt the run, or somewhat close. Uh, once I get through Ornstein and Smo, I think it'll be a breeze. Although there's still the Four Kings. Four Kings is not that crazy. Um, so yeah, I'm still, I'm working on it is the, the short answer. I'm working on it. And, um, once I've done every section hit list, we'll be doing like one attempt on stream a day, but tomorrow, tomorrow's gonna be, I think a bit weird where, um, it's Christmas Eve. I don't have any other plans. It's like 10 degrees here in Texas. Um, so I think I'm likely going to be wanting i'm going to be streaming tomorrow and it may be like a bit more casual with more like i might do some dark soul stream tomorrow we'll see okay we need our opponent to brick super super badly i haven't mastered bed of chaos i don't think it'll take super long though it's just like it's it's easy once you get it done presumably Surprise the entire stage is shut down. It's it's close. <laughs> I, I'm using a guide also, so like I'm using Dino's Dino Dino did a YouTube series that outlines the run, so it's it's not like I'm just like learning this all on my own, thankfully. Sadly, four one out of five oh, although this is our second four one with the deck. Um Let's do one more. I'm having a lot of fun with this deck, and then 
We'll see how long this this takes. Maybe I have a backup deck. Maybe we'll save that for later.